humble to be present among this awesome audience in Philippines today. And I must say that energy throughout two days long and having seated with the same chair and keeping notes is unbelievable. Can I get a big appreciation for yourself? Yeah. So throughout the whole day long today, that our theme is more about the leadership. And I picked up a few words. And correct me if I'm wrong, if you have not heard any of the words from here. Connection, vision, emotion, mental toughness, Resilience, relationship, engagement, pattern, heart, challenges, trust, fear, courage, innovation, adaptability, and creativity. So if I follow these all words, I feel heavy, little bit heavy. So I want to make you some light feelings at this moment. For that, I would like to request you to stand up for 30 seconds for me. So what I want you to do in the count of one to five, just take a deep breath and breathe out. So count of one to five. Breathe out and breathe down. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, and breathe out. One more time, one, two, three, four, five, and breathe out, five, four, three, two, one, thank you. Please have a seat. So if I collect all these words together and bring it into one word, then I may come up with one word that is, at the end of the day, not Lloyd's night, it's human. And if I say you leaders are human, then you have to put your human in front of your leadership because you need to take care of yourself first. And once I say that you need to take care of yourself just because of handling all the activities throughout the whole day, not really, because it's more than that. More than that because you don't need to uh, concern on the information or knowledge. You need to be a visionary leader. And that's why you need to be an imaginative leader. And once I say the word imagination, I mean using your brain. Not like the spare one that I have, but the, your original one. And once I say utilizing the brain, I also mean having a proper control over the speed of your mind. Having said that, let's move on. That's the reason why our awareness of our body as well as our brain is important, being a leader of 21st century. And for this, I have a model that covers the word brain itself, which comes with five letters, balance, renew, adapt, integrate, and nurture. By that I mean being an insightful leader, a resilient leader, an agile leader, an expansive leader, and an empowering leader. Which I'll be giving a one tip for each of the, each of the part, but for that I need to give you a little bit information regarding the brain science which is actually called the neuroscience of leadership, and which was first coined by Dr. David Rock on 2006 only. And that the background comes from the information advantages like fMRI or um, UGG, where we can scan the brain of the leader who are doing some sort of activities and we can see which part of our brain the blood is flowing and what part of our brain the blood is not flowing. As a summary, we can say on particular activity, let's say creativity, the particular part of our brain is more active and others are not. If we can say this, then we can also know 
which part is more important to take care of to do what sort of work. To, to understand this, I would like a little bit educate you around three most important parts of our brain, which includes our PFC, or prefrontal cortex, which is in the front. If I stand like this, this is our PFC, which is just at the back of our forehead. PFC, or prefrontal cortex, is also called our thinking part of our brain is also known as our executive part of our brain, which is responsible for decision making, calculating, analyzing, evaluating, comparing, and most importantly, inhibiting. Prefrontal cortex, in terms of their size, is only 4% of the total brain, but it takes 80% of the brain's energy. So you can understand it's working throughout the whole day. And all the words are important for any leader. So it is also for a leader important to take care of our prefrontal cortex. The second part of our brain is called limbic system or emotional part of our brain. And limbic system has got a small tiny part of the brain which is called amygdala. And amygdala is a small part within the emotional part of our brain, which is responsible for, again, three more Fs, but little different than yesterday, which includes fight, flight, or freeze. But some of the scientists say that four, five Fs, including fist and make love, but I'm not covering on those two. <laughs> Another interesting research that says our brain has got an organizing principle of scanning the environment five times a second. And on the basis of it, our brain can understand whether the environment is for or against. If it is a reward for me or it is a threat for me. If it is a threat for me, then I do not take part to the situation. I do not go forward. And if it is a threat, then I take myself away from the situation. So bottom line to say, if we need to have a proper brain functioning, then we need to put ourselves in a reward state more and more. And for that, my five tips includes first, balance. How do I get more balance of our thinking? First of all, you need to put ourselves into reward state and Secondly, we have to focus the environment is not creating any sort of threat around us. And for that, the, one of the research that I'm referring here by Friedman and Foster would say that even a small threat can cause a human 50% less in terms of their productivity. Moving forward, we only uh, take a decision not on the basis of our prefrontal cortex thinking decision making capacities. We also take some uh, aha moment. Sometimes we have some downtime, and for that we need to literally involve our time so that we can have our quiet time. We can be some sort of inward looking, not looking into the problem, rather looking into the solution not driving ourselves into describing the problem, rather, rather looking into the options of the solution and putting ourselves more into the reward state. And of course, doing multitasking throughout the whole day, added by some nights wake up. Not really, because multitasking can kill your IQ. And secondly, the reward, renew, or how can you get more resilience? How can you add more emotional balance over your activity? The thing I have done just now, that is the key. You have to understand your prefrontal cortex has to be active with the ingredient that's are important for our brain, which is oxygen. And by doing a 30 minute deep breathing, you can have a quality prefrontal cortex. Adaptability, of course important, the change around, the challenge around, 
So how can a research say that adaptability is very much important for us? It says that our brain has got the capability of being adaptive at any age. If you just do two things, and once you can adapt with the new changes, it doesn't come back to the old changes, and which is called neuroplasticity in the brain science research. And by doing only two things, which is you have to have a goal and pay enough attention to the new habits that can bring the goal into your life, which can have followed by your positive feedback. And only the positive feedback can stick your new habit. Number four, integration. We need to work, as a, as a leader, we need to work with other people. So integration is important and it comes with some sort of emotional bondage with other people. And once we call the emotional bondage, then the social motivational factors are also important. We need to understand what is the exact social motivational factor is, is more applicable for me. We need to also understand what is the most important social mo uh, motivational factors that are working with my team members. We need to understand that and then we need to communicate according to that. There are five, six different so social motiva motivational factors and if you are a connection person and if you just write a formal email, then I'll never be engaged. I'll, I'll just prefer a phone call, friendly and informal phone call over an email. And fifth is our nurture. How can I empower other people? How can I bring the best out of other people's leadership? So for that, I have to create the right mindset. I have to bring them into a growth mindset that mentioned by just a little bit ago by Jonathan, that Carol Drick's written book, The Mindset, which is a very good example of having a growth mindset. And how can we do that? we have to ask question. Because now in, a, in the days we have a tendency of directing directly by telling them what is the solution because we have to make it quick. But what we are doing, we are stopping them thinking. We are not letting them to grow. What we need to do, we need to ask them the question. We need to ask them toward the solution and we need to help them to find their thinking, their insights, and their solution through asking the question. You may say, though, what is my benefit out of that? Your benefit is you're helping some other person and you are developing well-built immune system. And what you're doing to other person, you're just generating the dopamine into their mind, into their brain. And that is making them physically more active to take an action. So we need to do some coaching conversation. And that has to follow up not only on the basis of the smart goal, also you need to bring the saves. They have to see it, feel it, accept it, and express it. On the top of it, you need to bring the vision, their emotion, their principles, their feelings into the activity so that they can get involved personally with companies' vision, feelings, values, and principles. And they can be ready to give more than 100%. And that is how I can say that this is how you can learn, most importantly, unlearn and relearn to be more fitted in new century of digital world and the book of world. And that's how you can be a balanced, renew, adapt, integrate, and nurturing leader who can have a control over the speed of their mind as well as others. Thank you so much. Yeah.